It's time for another high yield and free USMLE and Comlex practice question. A patient presents to the emergency department complaining of severe abdominal pain that radiates up. Vital signs reveal a temperature of 98.1 degrees Fahrenheit, a blood pressure of 126 over 82, a heart rate of 102, and a respiratory rate of 14. On exam, you note audible bowel sounds over the lower chest. Which of the following pathophysiologies is the cause of this presentation? A. Congenital defect of the pleuroperitoneal membrane. B. Failure of the processus vaginalis to close. C. Acquired weakness in the transversalis fascia. D. Perforation of rectus abdominis muscles. Or E. Strangulation of peritoneal contents. If you'd like some more time to think about this, pause the video now. And now I'm going to give you the correct answer. The correct answer choice to this practice question is choice A, congenital defect of the pleuroperitoneal membrane. The reason that this is the correct answer is because this question is alluding to a diaphragmatic hernia. When we look at the vignette, what you should have pulled out is the last sentence. On exam, you note audible bowel sounds over the lower chest. Now, even if you were reading this question and you didn't know that just from that phrasing that I was giving you a hernia, when you look at the correct answer choices, you can see that clearly the differential diagnosis here is, a, is one of many different types of hernias. And so the question is based on the vignette and based on simply hearing audible bowel sounds in the low chest, can you pick out the diaphragmatic hernia from the other types of hernias? Let's talk very, very briefly about a diaphragmatic hernia, just so if you've never studied it up until this video, you know what I'm talking about. So a diaphragmatic hernia refers to when the abdominal structures herniate upward into the thorax. And this can present as a sliding hiatal hernia or a paraesophageal hernia. If it's a sliding hiatal hernia, the gastroesophageal junction is displaced upwards and you'll see what's known as a quote hourglass stomach. If it's a paraesophageal hernia, the gastroesophageal junction will appear normal and the fundus will protrude into the thorax. When it comes to a diaphragmatic hernia, and this is where the question was going, the pathophysiology is either one, a congenital defect in the pleuroperitoneal membrane, or two, trauma. So if they, were, if they didn't have a congenital defect, then some type of trauma to that local area can cause the herniation but typically on your exam, it's gonna be a congenital defect. So that's a diaphragmatic hernia. And if we go back to the practice question, you can see that in that last sentence, I'm telling you that there are audible bowel sounds over the lower chest. And so that's really only going to happen when abdominal structures incorrectly or pathologically enter the thorax. And that is by definition, a diaphragmatic hernia. The other types of hernias don't have this finding. But let's look at the practice question and see if we could possibly eliminate incorrect answer choices. Because say, for example, you were taking this on your exam, but you didn't know that choice A referred to a diaphragmatic hernia, could you give yourself improved odds of answering this question correctly simply by eliminating incorrect answer choices? So choice B and choice C, B, failure of the processus vaginalis to close, and C, acquired weakness in the transversalis fascia, these are the pathophysiologies of indirect and direct inguinal hernias, respectively. So failure of the processus vaginalis to close, that causes indirect inguinal hernias, and acquired weakness in the transversalis fascia, that, that is the pathophysiology that causes a direct inguinal hernia. Now, typically, medical students are much more comfortable with inguinal hernias than the diaphragmatic or the femoral hernias. And for that reason, let's say that you kind of knew what B and C referred to, if you knew that, okay, in an indirect inguinal hernia and a direct inguinal hernia, there's definitely no audible bowel sounds in the thorax, I can probably eliminate choices B and C. And so theoretically, if you were able to do that, you would have a pretty good shot of answering this question correct because you'd have only choice A, D, and E to choose from. Now, when we look at D and E, D, perforation of the rectus abdominis muscles, and E, strangulation of peritoneal contents, th these don't really refer to pathophysiologies of, of anything necessarily. Strangulation is a complication of a hernia and perforation of the rectus abdominis muscle really 
doesn't belong in this question necessarily. Yeah, rectus abdominis muscles are, are locally involved in different types of hernias, but the perforation of a rectus abdominis muscle, that's just sort of just a distractor. And so if you're able to pick up on this and eliminate choices D and E, you would only have one choice left to pick, and that's choice A. So there are two different ways to approach this. One, you simply know that a diaphragmatic hernia gives you audible bowel sounds in the chest or thorax, or you eliminate direct inguinal and indirect inguinal hernias because you know that they don't cause that. And then you're essentially choosing between a true pathophysiology in choice A, a distractor in choice D, and a complication in choice E. And so with that in mind, that's how you want to start to train your brain to look at these questions. I hope that this was helpful. Keep up the great work.